almost two weeks into free agency and the Indianapolis Colts still have multiple holes on the roster that need to be addressed. So what is the plan for Chris Ballard and the Colts the rest of the off season? Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Horseshoe Huddle podcast presented by Fan Nation on SI.com, part of the Fans First Sports Network. My name is Andrew Moore, and as always, I'm joined here by my fellow analyst at Horseshoe Huddle, Drake Wally. A little bit different location. Drake is uh, up in up in South Bend uh, visiting the in-laws rather than uh, the, the the Colts cave at his at his place. But, but Drake, uh, I mean, like I said, two weeks into free agency here. There's been only two outside signings by the Indianapolis Colts. Otherwise, they're pretty much running it back with the same group. But there's still quite a few holes on this roster that need to be addressed before the start of the 2024 season. Yeah, and when you come, you know, when you think about what has happened as opposed to what hasn't happened, right? So what they've done is they've retained the building blocks. They've retained the guys that you have to have in place if you want to make any sort of playoff run, any sort of you know, Super Bowl run, you can't let the, those core pieces go. So they've done that. They've kept them in-house. What they haven't done, and I don't think that fans understand this, that there's still so much time left to sign guys, right? But, like, they haven't gone out there and addressed the safety. They haven't re-signed Julian Blackman. They haven't, you know, addressed some of the other position needs that, that might be – that might be – you know, something they can address in the draft. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's still time is what I'm saying, but they, they, they have been a little bit, I think, I think a little bit hesitant to pull the trigger on any of these free agents, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean they're still not going to make it happen. Everybody. Yeah. So what tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the, uh, the plans for the Indianapolis Colts, the rest of the way, both in free agency and the draft. We also have some re-signings to talk about with Taven Bryan and Danny Pinter and guys, Drake and I were live on location at the Notre Dame pro day today. Uh, so we're going to give you a recap of what we saw, some prospects that really stood out going to be a really fun show here on this Thursday night. Of course, shout out to Truett for our first super chat of the evening. Really appreciate it, Truett, uh, for all your support and the super chat. Drake doesn't have the the Colts mug, but hey, he still has a drink on hand, and it's probably pretty strong. So, But Truett, thank you so much. Truett says, I felt the need need for Sneed. If not, then draft. Well, Truett, I think you're going to be disappointed because at this (laughs) point, uh, Legere's Sneed to Indy is is pretty much dead uh, uh, until further notice. But hey, thanks again for the super chat. Uh, stats Matt saying Drake's background is throwing him off. He's gonna have to get used to it at the in laws' yeah. house. Uh, Sean Conkright is in the house, uh, and it says Drake that haircut scared the hell out of me. Drake has always been bald, guys. Uh, Drake and I both yeah. rocking the chrome dome, you just don't see it. He's usually rocking a hat. So, uh, but as we get started tonight, please go follow us on all of our socials like Horseshoe Huddle on Facebook, follow at Colts on FN on X, and subscribe to the Horseshoe Huddle YouTube channel. Hit that bell so you know when Drake and I go live every Monday and Thursday night or for special breaking news episodes so you never miss a chance to catch us here on YouTube. But if you can't, that's okay. Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you listen to podcasts, we're on there as well. So make sure you subscribe. Give us a five-star review so we can reach other Colts fans just like you. So, Drake, let's dive right into it. The remaining off-season plans for the Indianapolis Colts. And obviously, I think I think that what most people will want us to start with is, is free agency because that's what's happening here. The draft's still about a month away, uh, but it's going to be here before you know it. But as we get close, as we go through free agency over these next over these next few few weeks or so, I think this is when we're going to see the Colts be more active as far as signing outside free agents. Uh, the reason for that is because we always talk about how the Colts are more active in the second and third wave of, of free agency. And that's honestly where we're getting right now. You know, we're talking about uh, where where the, the market is not not as as competitive. Uh, I think is is a good word for it. Uh, there's a lot of there's still a lot of really good talent out there, uh, but it's not going to be o- overpaying for for players because they're not going to be there's not going to be multiple bidding wars for the same player. The guys that are out there are taking their time, uh, weighing their decisions, and and the Colts can be patient with with these with these various prospects or various players, I should say, that they're looking into. 
Yes, and they might not be the, you know, the big name signings like everybody wants. Everybody gets really excited about that kind of stuff. But, you know, to, to rehash something that we talked about and we've talked about multiple times is that you keep those core pieces. That's how you do it. But then in Ballard's way of doing things, you don't want to strap yourself too much to an outside guy that you've never had play for your team. All right, now it's always a risk when you sign somebody that's never been with your team. Like the Titans, they're taking a risk by signing Calvin Ridley. All right, mm-hmm. team, teams that are taking those risks by bringing in outside guys, that's not what the Colts feel like they have to do. Okay, the signings they've made have been a backup quarterback and a depth defensive tackle. Okay, but like you said, some of the names that I'm looking at just for wide receiver and then for cornerback, for safety, those are three positions that the Colts need to address. Well, they're names that you can probably not only get for the cheap, but get the service that you need. And you don't have to get in a bidding war, like you mentioned. It's also not going to cost the rest of your $30 million, I think, is what they have left in cap. Uh, you know, you're not, you're, you're just not strapping yourself down and boxing yourself because the Colts don't like to do that. They like to have options. So I think that they've been patient. I think that they do need to start maybe making some moves sooner rather than later because um, these guys are still going to get taken off the board. But like we talked about actually at the pro day earlier, Andrew, is that, you know, people aren't going to be beating down the door for some of these guys that are sitting there, especially if they're 30, 31 years old. I think the Colts currently, I don't think it's at 30. I think it's a little less. I think it's probably around $20 million. Maybe I think maybe in between, oh, okay. between I would say 18 to 20, because I think over the cap currently has them at 22 million, but I don't think that includes Joe Flacco's deal. Uh, it doesn't include tape and Brian or, or Danny Pinter. So once those guys are in there, that's, that's definitely going to look like 23 going to change. Million. Yeah. The 23 million, but the, again, that doesn't include, uh, uh, Pinter that doesn't include Brian that doesn't include Joe Flacco so things things will change there but but yeah I mean I, I think obvi- the obvious answer of what the Colts still need is is secondary help you know no additions to the cornerback room so currently you're you still have uh what would presumably be Juju Brents is the starter on one side uh competition between Jalen Jones and Dallas Flowers on the other and then Kenny Moore in the slot the safety the safety room is even more bare you know Julian Blackman is a free agent he's still out there uh he's visiting with teams and and the Colts uh, the Colts have maybe still been in contact with him but a deal doesn't look like it's in the it's it's close to being done right now. They're still letting Julian Blackman go out there and and test the market. Uh, you haven't brought in any outside safeties yet. So at, at free safety, you're still looking at at Nick Cross and 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 Rodney Thomas. And if Blackman isn't brought back, then both of those guys end up in the starting lineup as of at, would be as of today. And are you really comfortable with that? I mean, I wouldn't be. You know, so there are still plenty of of names out there on the market. But to me, obviously, and I think to everybody out there that follows this team, secondary is priority one. And 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 addressing that, whether it is through free agency, getting some veterans in here, which I think I think that would be the 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 smartest route for the Colts to go, or whether it's it's dipping into the draft for for all of those resources. Uh, one way or another, more talent needs to be added to this secondary because. You, you can't just rely on this group, uh, everybody in this group, to, to take another step. You know, there could very well be players that, that take a step back. We saw it last year with Rodney Thomas II. So you, you want to have some, some proven commodities in there as well as adding some fresh young talent. I don't see a problem with, with at doing both, you know, getting a, a safety and a cornerback in the draft while also adding a safety and a quarterback through free agency to really strengthen that unit. Because as of right now, I mean, you you know that's a, that's a weakness on your team, and and you can't just not address that that weakness because otherwise you're taking a massive risk into this season when when there's it's very easy to be able to go out there and and add talent and 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 boost both both the cornerback room and the safety room before the 2024 season gets underway. Yeah, and you you can't leave that open because that was the biggest liability to your team last year. I know that the offense didn't have multiple players and at times kind of, you know, I, I think got stuck, in, you know, in the water. But the secondary, that, like you said, cornerback, I, I understand that there's multiple guys we've talked about that are available in the draft. But I love your idea of dr- draft a corner in a safety, 
sign a corner and a safety because there's there's still a couple of names, especially for cornerback that could fit the Colts. You know, one guy is Adore Jackson, another guy uh, is is Xavier Howard. I know that those aren't the sexiest names, and one of those guys is 30 years old, coming off of a pretty rough year in in Howard, but they could have a fresh start with this team. They would join a secondary that really needs help, and they could shine immediately, especially as mentors, especially as guys that have the experience to help out another guy like Kenny Moore. And then for safety, you know, you, you still have a couple of names as well. And I, and I do think that with corner and with safety, there's guys in the draft that can fit those needs. I mean, we've talked about it multiple times. But, of course, Quandre Diggs, that's another guy that sticks out. I, I think that at this point, that sounds like the most realistic signing the Colts would make at safety. You know, I think that they're going to that, – that if they go any route in free agency, it's probably going to be that one because he can still play. You know, he's got that veteran leadership that you need and you're not going to you're not going to have to worry uh, about a, a gaping hole in your secondary. But the one the one outlier here is, you know, how do you replace Julian Blackman? I think that the Colts, they just feel like right now that they can. I think that's why they're just letting him go and visit teams like the 49ers, like the Bills, because they feel either that they've got his replacement in the building and Nick Cross to play strong safety or they feel like they can draft somebody to to uh, replace him at strong safety and maybe, or um, yeah, at strong safety and maybe move Nick Cross to free safety. I have no idea what the Colts are trying to do at safety right now. It seems like they're pretty confident that they can replace Blackman though. I, I agree. Um, it's, it's, I think it's it's still it's still very risky what they're doing. Obviously, letting him test the market yeah. it doesn't. And and if they don't want to bring Julian Blackman back, that's their prerogative. But they have to have a, a plan in place. You know, are they are do they really have the confidence in Nick Cross to go out there and be this team starting strong safety? You know, because in in Gus Bradley's in Gus Bradley's scheme. You know, the strong safety is the communicator back there in the secondary. And we saw that it took a, a veteran like Rodney McLeod. We saw that that when Julian Blackman went over to strong safety, he had his best best season of his career. And he yeah. did a really fine job at, 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 at being able to communicate throughout the secondary. But I mean, last year when Blackman was out, you had Cross and, and Rodney Thomas. There was just there were so many lapses in coverage. The communication was breaking down. So do you have the faith? Do they have the faith in in Nick Cross at strong safety? I'm not sure. But if it was if it was me in charge, I'm not sure that I would yet because he really he's shown flashes, but he hasn't been able to go out there and show it on a consistent basis. I understand you put a lot, you put a decent amount of draft capital into Nick Cross because you traded up into the third round uh, uh, to 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 draft him. And, and you thought he was going to develop in there. But until he starts to show it on the field, I don't think you can be confident with him to just go out there and, and take over that strong safety position. And, and if, if he does, fantastic. But I, I, th I still think you need some assurance back there. But, Drake, in my opinion, I think, I think what is more likely to happen is it is the Colts if they're going to bring in a uh, a veteran I would assume it's at the safety position I really yeah. do you, you mentioned Quandre Diggs I think that would be a fantastic fit at the free safety spot uh, a, a guy that that would have success in Gus Bradley's um, system he's a veteran knows what he's doing uh, I mean hey I never say never. Justin Simmons is still out there. So, yeah. uh, and, I, and I know the Colts have, have reached out to Justin Simmons camp. So there is, there is some interest there. Uh, I know the Colts are keeping tabs on that, but, but some other, some other free safeties to, to look at, you know, uh, uh, I mean, obviously Julian Blackman is, is out there. Uh, Adrian Amos is, is, is another name to, to kind of keep an eye on Terrell Edmonds. Uh, so there's still some guys out there, uh, that the Colts could bring in at, at, at safety, you know, especially that free safety position. And then when you look at the cornerbacks, uh, you, you mentioned Zayvon Howard, uh, I, there's, there's other guys out there say like a, a Steven Nelson, who is, is a veteran played with the Houston Texans last season. Uh, uh, I think uh, if I, if I'm not mistaken, Akella Weatherspoon is, is still out there. Uh, another guy that's mm -hmm. 29 years old, you could get him for probably a one year deal. And, and he, he's, kind of fits what the Colts like. He's a big corner. He's physical, long arms. Uh, you know, I, I think that would be a nice, the nice match too. But what I'm getting at here is, is 
although we're, we're two weeks into free agency, there's still plenty of names out there. And it's not like the Colts have to sign three or four of these guys. If you sign a safety, if you sign a cornerback, I think you're probably good at that position, you know, just to add some depth because you don't want to go into the season with such such young units, you know, you already did that with the cornerback position. And I understand that really the only way these guys can get better is, is if you let them play, but at the same time, they have to show you that they're ready to play. And, and, and I think at at safety, that's more worrisome than corner because we've seen Juju Brents and Jalen Jones play. We know they can play. You just would, you're just hoping that they take the next step. Uh, But at, at safety, you know, with Rodney Thomas and then Nick Cross, you're not really that comfortable that they can come in, be those starters, and 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 help help take this defense to the next level because they simply just haven't shown that yet in the opportunities that they've been given. Yeah, and we're not we're not downing Nick Cross's potential here. Okay, I mean he he was also drafted when he was like 20 years old. Mm-hmm. All right, he is still freakishly young, and he's going into year three, and he's still very, very raw and very young. So I, I think that the potential's there, but what we're saying is you you don't want to have to continue to rehash young team, a young team, let them grow together. You don't just want young across the board. You got to have some veterans in there. You got to have some guys that know what they're doing to ref- uh, so that those young guys like Juju Brents, like like Jalen Jones, they can kind of mirror what that, that veteran's doing. And I'm not saying that Kenny Moore's not fantastic, but help the guy, you know, bring in that veteran corner that you talked about. There's plenty of names. And as the days pass, those names get a little bit cheaper. Okay. Like, and the Colts just, are, they just, they can just sit there. All right. Like, like Andrew mentioned, none of these guys are just flying off the shelf. Justin Simmons is the top available safety. He has been by all regards, a top three available safety for a while now. And he still does not have a suitor. Okay. So the Colts can sit and be very patient. I, I will say though, Rodney Thomas, he's got a lot to prove. He's got a lot to show that 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 makes that makes it make sense, I guess, for him to continue to to get that starting rotation because he just didn't show a lot of effectiveness and coverage. I know he had those four interceptions uh, a couple years ago, but if you look at the tape on how those picks happened, a lot of them were just a lot of them were almost happenstance, you know, kind of like Yannick Ngakwe's sacks that season. So you just can't go in hoping anymore. You need to, you need to, you never know what's going to happen, right, Andrew? But you want to put your best foot forward for this team. And your best foot is to sign a safety, sign a corner, and then probably go back in the draft and get a couple guys in there as well. My gut tells me that the Colts will sign a safety still in free agency, uh, a cornerback position, probably 50, 50, you know, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know if I don't, that one could go either way, but from everything that that I've heard, everything that I've seen, the the players that they that they're still looking into and discussing, the safety position is still a top priority for the Indianapolis sure, Colts. Now, as we get into the draft to address some of these needs, Drake, there's something that the people can can kind of educate themselves on before the draft, and that's the 2024 edition of the Indie Draft Guide. So, guys, make sure you pre-order your copy of the Indie Draft Guide. Over 225 prospect write-ups with their fits uh, for the Indianapolis Colts, and plus other features throughout. It's what Drake and I will be using all draft season long. Uh, make sure you use the link in the description. And the code DRAFTMAS for a dollar off. Uh, make sure you get that pre-ordered. So as soon as it drops here at the beginning of April, you'll be able to dive right into it before the draft and after the draft as the Colts select uh, uh, at least. It will be at least seven picks. You know Ballard is all about adding more picks uh, in the right. draft. But go ahead and get pre-order your edition of the Indie Draft Guide today. But Drake, as we talk about, uh, this upcoming draft and how the Colts are going to uh, address their needs. Obviously, uh, I think this is where you start looking more at the offensive side of the ball. You know, mm-hmm. we're, we're talking about the wide receiver position uh, or if, if the Brock Bowers uh, could still be uh, a possibility by just adding more explosive elements uh, in, in a pass catcher. You know, uh, maybe looking for a a backup running back in the later rounds to replace Zach Moss. I know the Colts re-signed Trey Sermon. Uh, Evan Hall is going to be coming back. Uh, But I know the Colts would like to have uh, another, 
Zach Moss type of back uh, to spell Jonathan Taylor at times. So, and then obviously the secondary, safety, cornerback, those are still going to be high levels of interest for the Indianapolis Colts heading into the draft. And 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 regardless. Uh, I think if a safety is signed, if a cornerback is signed, uh, the Colts are going to continue to add young players in that secondary, Drake. Yes, because at the end of the day, we saw just how bad the injury bug can hit a team last year. And you saw that, hey, you don't think about those those backups until they're on the field. And, and then you wonder, you know, why didn't they address depth? Why didn't they do this? Why didn't they, why didn't they do that? And even Ballard mentioned it in one of his pressers that it's his fault that they, don't, they didn't have more at wide receiver, you know, because uh, then when Ashton Doolin went down, you know, you're kind of looking at just Michael Pittman and then a rookie. So um, I, I think that there's just I know that people, certain people kind of think that maybe fans think that the, the sky is falling a little bit. And Ballard is just like sitting on his hands. There's there's multiple needs for this team that aren't like the sexiest. OK, yes, the corner. Yes, the wide receiver. But there's depth receiver, depth safety. Probably still need the starting safety. You need depth corner, depth lineman, which they've kind of gone out there and done that with Brian, with um, uh, gosh, now I'm having a uh, Raquan Davis. I mean, they've they've made these necessary signings. You needed a backup quarterback. Sure as hell isn't going to be Sam Ellinger. Okay, so you went out and you got Joe Flacco. They're they're getting those needs taken care of. It's just that I really think that they're banking on those more crucial positions like wide receiver and cornerback and safety that we constantly talk about. They're going to address those, I, I think, for the future in the draft. All right. Now for the immediate, they're going to try to pick up a couple, a couple veterans, I think. So, um, but like you said, Andrew, man, I know that it's such a boring word and it's, it's like driven into the ground, but we'll say it a million times. You have to have depth. Okay. You just do. And it's the deeper teams that tend to make playoff runs despite injuries, those teams that have injuries. And you're like, like the, like the lions, you're like, how the heck do they just continue to, 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 you know, go, go through the postseason? It's because they've got a deep depth chart and they also have tough as hell guys that will just stay out there on the field. And of course the Colts have that too, with the Forrest Buckner guys like that. Now you just got to continue to shore up that depth and you should be okay. Well, and I think too, with how loaded this draft class is at wide receiver, you know, oh, yeah. you, you don't see the Colts going out and necessarily wanting to spend money on veteran wide receivers when they can double dip at the wide receiver position if they so if they so please, you know, they want to take one at 15 or in the middle of the first round then choose to take another one uh, on day three you know right there you could get that gets you to your two other wide receivers and and you have a solid six right there because you're already you already know Pittman Downs Pierce and and Doolin those four guys are locks to make the roster mm -hmm. behind that not a lot, if anything. So you're looking for two guys to add. I would expect a, a guy to, to possibly either supplant Pierce or 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 backup Pierce. If they take a guy early enough, he'll end up supplanting Pierce. Then you're also looking for another slot guy because I mean, yeah, Doolin can be in the slot, but he's more of that X wide receiver or or a guy on the outside. You still want maybe a quick win, shifty guy in the slot to help back up Josh Downs moving forward. DSG Goodbar with our second super chat of the evening. Uh, hey DSG Goodbar, thank you so much for the super chat. And, and as always, thank you so much for your support, buddy. Uh, he asked, Estime looks like a good mid-round running back. Thunder to Jonathan Taylor's lightning. Ooh. Anyone really flash at the Notre Dame Pro Day? Yeah, we're definitely going to talk about some, some, we'll talk about some other guys that flash at the Notre Dame Pro, uh, Pro Day a little later in the show here. And we'll make I'll make sure to throw that back up on the screen. But we, oh, yeah. let's talk about Estimate. You know, uh, Estimate definitely one of the stars of the pro day today, and could could be a could be a, pot a potential fit uh, to back up Jonathan Taylor if the Colts are looking for a guy in the third and fourth round. You know. Uh, he ran much better in the 40 today at the combine. It was a four, seven 40 and for a running back, that's a, a big yikes on, on the scouting report today, mid four fives, much better for Audric Estime uh, during his drills looked, looked really, really confident with his, with his footwork, fast footwork uh, uh, was able to show the explosiveness uh, that he has at the running back position. In my opinion, Drake, he looked really, really good today. My apologies there. Yeah, uh, with Audric Estime, we were all talking about, you know, he's going to have to do something about that 40-yard dash. I know that that's not everything, but when you're a running back, like you said, and you, you post a 4.7, that's just not 
That's not typically what any team is looking for. And he goes out there and he has a 4.54 both times. Okay. And he's like 225 pounds. The dude is a hoss. I mean, he's a big guy and he moves pretty freaking fast for a guy that size. So we were talking about it with Jake too. Like, you know, will he be a Colt? That's still to be determined, of course, but it is enticing to think about him in that scheme because they were looking at AJ Dillon. All right, and A.J. Dillon is a power back. Now, I think that you want Estime to, to maybe be a little bit more of a receiving back because that's what every back has to do, and we talked to him about that today uh, during the interviews. But, man, he increased his draft stock. Like you said, he made himself some extra money for sure, and I think he would be great in that offense because the word is still kind of out on Trey Sermon. He really hasn't played a lot to make anyone super confident in his role on the team, but I do think if they did hypothetically draft estimate he would push a sermon for that third spot on the chart i i do think so you know and and he i think he's good enough in in the passing game he definitely is in in pass protection uh he's not necessarily the receiving threat uh but but that's what you have evan hall for you know your your backup running backs aren't going to be all around running backs you know so if you have a guy like estimate a powerful back guy that can spell Jonathan Taylor, but still be very effective running in between the tackles and, and picking up that tough yardage. You would take that. Evan Hall, your third down back, you can use him in, and as more of a, a receiving option. Uh, potentially have Jonathan Taylor and Evan Hall on the field at the same time in, in the backfield on, on either side of, of Anthony Richardson. You know, so I think Estime would be a very, very good fit for the for the Colts. He's athletic, uh, and and he's the kind of the type that they are looking for uh, uh, to 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 back up. Anth- or I'm sorry, not Anthony Rich, the backup Jonathan Taylor uh, moving forward. So great question, DSG Goodbar. Love it and appreciate the super chat as always, buddy. Uh, but yeah, Drake. So Estime was good. Uh, what are some other guys uh, uh, that that? that you think could could potentially fit for the Indianapolis Colts in the draft, not necessarily just at running back, but to fit these needs that they currently have, you know, to still be more explosive on offense, wide receiver, tight end, uh, or in the secondary, because obviously there still hasn't been any moves there. Who are some guys that you think are still really good fits for the Indianapolis Colts as we're a month out from the draft? You know, I, I absolutely love Jaden Hicks. I think that uh, at safety, I think he's for Washington State. Who is the guy that I'm blanking on that you had just ahead of him at safety? Washington State. Uh, no, Jay- no, no. Jaden Hicks is Washington State. I'm saying I think that you had somebody else. Cole, I have Cole Bishop. Uh, That's I right. Cole Bishop's a fantastic fit for the Colts at strong safety. Yeah, I I think that the Colts, th- those are a couple guys that really stand out, especially at safety. I think that there's still going to be some other positions that are some other guys, um, maybe even a guy that plays more of a hybrid role where you can, you know, bounce them back and forth. I still think they need free safety more than anything, um, but it, it's going to depend on what the heck happens with Julian Blackman. I know it looks like he's, he's going to be out of there, but you never know. Maybe the market falls through on the guy and the Colts resign him for cheap. So uh, at cornerback, I... I I love Cooper DeGene. I you know I I think that a guy like him really fits what the Colts are trying to do. Of course, um, uh, Quinion Mitchell. You know he's he's an athletic freak. A guy that we that we saw today. Um, uh, Cam Hart. You know that's another guy, real long, real fast, um, physical type of cornerback. He fits. Um, you know, uh, Terry and Arnold. Uh, uh, Cam Wit or Cam Wiggins. Um, Nate Wiggins. A bunch of guys could fit the defense or the, the defensive secondary for the Colts, but I think then you talk about wide receiver. Now that's an interesting one because it's not just Brian Thomas Jr. It's not just Roe Madonzi. It's not just those types of guys. It's guys like Ricky Pearsall. All right, it's guys like Xavier Worthy. It's guys like um, uh, Malachi Corley. Uh, I mean, they, there there are. It is a deep freaking wide receiver class. You don't have to rush to the first round and pick a receiver at fifteen. You don't have to do that and and miss out on all the good talent you can wait till the second third round still get yourself a hell of a receiver so there's just so many ways the colts can address this man because there's a lot of talent in the draft especially a wide receiver um but but don't sleep on those safeties and corners because the colts can also get it done there as well and i i like where you're thinking drake i think you're you're more still thinking defense early for me i'm still thinking offense early i still think offense is the pick you know uh, i know the colts haven't addressed cornerback yet 
But in my opinion, just the, the way that the Colts have been going, it still seems like offense is probably going to be that pick early. Uh, I just have this feeling, you know, and I'm talking about Brian Thomas Jr. for LS, at LSU or, or A.D. Mitchell. Uh, out of Texas, uh, I because hey, we're we're gonna talk about it a little bit later, but there's a reason the Colts sent such a big contingent uh, uh, of 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 coaches to the Texas Pro Day yesterday. Shade Steichen, Jim Bob Cooter, and Reggie Wayne were all at the Texas Pro Day to watch Ad Mitchell and Xavier Worthy. You know, you that, interested? <laughs> that matters. That really does matter because most of these pro days, the Colts send their area scouts, you know, but when, when you see guys like, like Shane Steichen and, and Jim Bob Cooter, Reggie Wayne at a pro day, uh, that, that shows high levels of interest. Uh, when you see Morocco Brown at a pro day, Morocco Brown was the one that was in constant communication with Anthony Richardson was there at Anthony Richardson's pro day last year. That again matters. So, so you have to see who is there at the, uh, uh, at the, at the pro days and and it really tells you the the type of interest that that the teams have it's not always the case uh but but you can tell who's high up on the colts draft boards when when that happens so uh obviously secondary cam hart uh, i think is a perfect fit for the colts uh, uh there's some other uh cornerbacks out there tj tampa if you're looking in round good, one good one not- Quinion Mitchell or Terry and Arnold, like you said, Cooper DeGene, and then safety. Like I said, I think Cole Bishop is, is a perfect fit. Those, those are, again, those I think are, are where the Colts are really going to focus in those first three rounds is, is wide receiver or pass catcher. If you want to include Brock Bowers uh, and then cornerback and, 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 and safety, you know, those are the areas that the Colts are really going to focus on, on, on day one and day two. Yeah, and, and people, they're not going to screw the. They're going to do everything they can not to screw this up because they realize the secondary was a big issue. They realize they need more explosiveness on offense. That's the one word I have heard Ballard and Steichen say over and over for both sides of the ball is explosive, explosiveness, better, bigger. Like they they want to make more of an impact. So they're going to make it happen. They're just trying to be very very cautious with the money, and they're trying to be very very cautious with while they do have seven picks now and probably more by the end of the draft. You really don't have a lot of picks at the end of the day compared to how many guys are out there. So the Colts are going to do their diligence. They realize they have weaknesses on the roster. And this is a fantastic question by Yim. Thank you so much, Yim, for the $5 super chat. Really, really appreciate it. And that's a great question. Way too early first round prediction. I think both Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeGene are as Ballard as it gets. And you, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, Yim, because Cooper DeGene, uh, I think, is, is a fantastic cornerback, incredibly athletic, can do it all. Uh, Quinion Mitchell, we've seen the athletic freak he is. Uh, so both of those guys are probably top five in the top five players being considered at number 15 drake i'm gonna let you go first who do you think the colts take at number 15 as of today and why oh man i think man it's so difficult because it's really down between the wide receiver and the core i think it's down between wide receiver and cornerback mm-hmm. um but i would say that i would personally th- say they're going to take cornerback and i would say i would say quinion mitchell and i say that because i like it, it just like uh yim mentions perfect fit for what ballard typically drafts i think that i i almost said receiver but i think that just how deep the receiver class is i think the colts feel that they can still get a couple really solid players it, it past just round one um i i just think that when you look at that cornerback room man you need an impact player and i know that he's a rookie but I really think Quinion Mitchell's the real deal. A guy like Cooper DeGene is also the real deal. I mean, Nate Wiggins, all those guys, great. I think as far as a fit for the Colts and Gus Bradley, though, I think they go Quinion Mitchell because that secondary was atrocious at times, and it really screwed the Colts out of a couple wins last season. And that's that's a very good point. That's a very good point. But I'm still going on the offensive side of the ball. That's it's, fair. And to me – we're still on the Brock Bowers train, obviously. However, with the moves that that the uh, uh, the New York Jets have made this off season, I could very well see Brock Bowers going number ten to the Jets. So while the train is still going, it's slowed down quite a bit. But hey, if if Brock Bowers is a Colt in in April, you're not going to hear uh, any complaints out of me. But 
I'm looking at the wide receiver position. I'm looking at Brian Thomas Jr. and I'm looking at A.D. Mitchell. And and if you would have asked me before yesterday, I would have probably said Brian Thomas Jr. should be the, the favorite running away to be that pick at 15. Now I'm not so sure, you know, and this could change in a week because that's when LSU's pro day is. But with the Colts there at at Texas sending such a, a big contingent of, of people to, to watch A.D. Mitchell and, and Xavier Worthy, they've been doing a lot of work on, on Xavier Worthy. So if the Colts do trade back into the later, later picks of round one, I, then I think it's Xavier Worthy. However, if they stay at 15 or trade back just a couple spots and stay in the teens, I, I would probably say it's, it, I would say 55% AD Mitchell right now. Uh, that, that's just the feeling I have because he's a guy that, that can win deep, has explosive speed, incredible athletes, uh, and, and something that, that as I've watched more film of AD Mitchell, the, the more I've watched, the more I've seen how, how nuanced he is as a route runner. And what do we always talk about? Uh, one of the main pitfalls of, of Alec Pierce, you know, not the best route runner, uh, usually is, is the, the deep threat, uh, but can't really do too much else. A.D. Mitchell has that ability to go deep. He is faster than Alec Pierce, uh, almost the same size, uh, but he's a much better route runner, and he can win underneath as well as over the top. So uh, I think he's A.D. Mitchell obviously still needs some refinement. That's where Reggie Wayne comes in. That's where uh, you can see some of the development happening. But the the I mean, the, the comparison that A.D. Mitchell receives a lot of times for his route running is cd lamb if if the, if the colts are getting a cd lamb type route runner sign me up that's exactly what they would need at the z wide receiver position opposite of michael Pittman. and and if the colts could get that out of ad mitchell i think that would just take this offense to a completely another level yeah and when you think about that comp all right cd lamb is a fantastic receiver i mean he's he's a very very good receiver and so it, it's a name that people haven't really linked to the Colts or like if you look online or anything like that you, you know you've heard Brian Thomas Jr. Roma Donzi you've heard names like that Xavier Worthy even you know get guys that you know might be in the later rounds but boy he he really impressed at the combine first off uh or not not actually let me go back not Xavier Worthy Malachi Corley uh, but A.D. Mitchell really impressed at the combine he really impressed the Colts I think and and it tells everything people like Andrew said Shane Steichen Chris Ballard and Reggie, or excuse me, Shane Steich and Jim Bob Cooter and Reggie Wayne all go to see two receivers, basically. That tells you everything you need to know. If they're willing to send their wide receivers coach, who, by the way, basically got the Colts to draft Josh Downs, and your offensive play caller, who's also your head coach and your OC, that tells you everything right there. I think that those two shoot right up to the top as far as the wide receivers the Colts have their eyes on. Not to say that... They don't want those other guys we mentioned, but they feel, I think, that these two right here might be just a better fit for what they're trying to do, and that is be explosive. Now, I think that Worthy's got a little bit, maybe a little bit more to work on as far as like to be a complete receiver because he's just blinding quick, and and sometimes he can't get off of the bigger, more physical guys. You know, for for uh, uh, press defense, they sometimes can overwhelm him. But I, I, I think that A.D. Mitchell's a guy that's a more complete dude, you know, and he's probably got a little bit of a higher ceiling. Because remember, speed isn't everything in the NFL. It's Mitchell not. definitely has the higher ceiling than Worthy. Yeah, so I think that I think that Mitchell might be a guy that's going to be that's going to shoot over the top of Worthy. Like you said, if uh, I think that you mentioned, if they stay, it's Mitchell. You know, between the two. But if they trade back and they go into into the later part of the the first round, it's probably going to be Worthy. But either way, I think that you're getting yourself one hell of a receiver. I would just hope. And this is just my opinion that they would go the Mitchell route because I just think there's more to offer there for the for the immediate and for the long term. Uh, it, it's going to be interesting either way to see what they do at, at, at it's 15. It's nice to not just talk about quarterbacks. <laughs> and I'm going to be I'm, I'm really going to be paying attention to who the Colts send to the LSU Pro Day uh, next week. Uh, who's going to be there to watch Brian Thomas Jr. But yeah, fantastic question. Thank you so much for the super chat. Really, really appreciate it. So Drake, as we address, there's still multiple needs uh, for this Colts roster. Uh, we're still early in the offseason and there's still plenty of guys out there. So that's why I don't think there's any there's no no need to panic 
you know, there's still plenty of options out there. Uh, but I mean, if the longer they wait, the longer the Colts are going to risk losing out on an impact player, especially in the secondary. So they can't sit on their hands too too long really need to start making some moves in order to 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 bring in some of those difference makers especially a safety and corner yeah and hey i know that they're not in a, in, a, in a rush right but like you said the talent is also slimmer the the impact talent it's getting slimmer so they need to make a decision i think sooner rather than later but also people don't freaking panic there's still a long time before the draft you've still got like a month and four days, man, before the draft. And that means a lot can still happen in free agency. So just kind of buckle in, get comfy, grab your popcorn. The Colts know what they're doing. They're not just going to let all these positions go to waste. Now, the Colts did make some pretty big uh, re-sign some guys this week, Drake, that are definitely going to impact the roster. That's Taven Bryan and Danny Pinter. You know, one year extensions, as Drake wrote on horseshoehuddle.com. The Colts re signed a former first round pick. Yes, Taven Bryan is back on the roster. So is Danny Pinter back on one year deals. Drake, I'm going to be honest with you, bud. The Danny Pinter signing. Okay, I get that. Yeah, really, really good backup center. Uh, tore his, uh, uh, I'm sorry, broke his ankle last year in training camp. So, Willie, we didn't get to see uh, uh, him last year much, but Taven Bryant, that one, I did not expect Brian to be back. I don't think very many people expected Brian to be back, yet he is on a one-year deal. Uh, Drake, what do you think? Why do you think the Colts brought back I take Taven Bryant? I think it's pretty obvious why Danny Pinter, you know, for, for depth along the interior of the offensive line. But after you sign Raekwon Davis, you have Adetomo Adabari there for a backup three technique. Why is Taven Bryant back with this team? You know, uh, to, real quick to comment on the Pinter one, I, I, I'm actually okay with that because, like you said, yeah. he, he, he lost. Uh, he, he was, you know, he was injured, out for the whole year. But the thing is, he's got versatility. He plays center. He plays guard. He can play multiple things. I know he really struggled at guard, but that's not a bad thing. Dude, <laughs> when I saw the Taven Bryan one happen, I, I honestly said to myself, like, I, I really do couldn't find any even the smallest reason why that makes sense and um maybe it's because they feel like out of out of tomorrow out of isn't up to speed where they want maybe they want a guy that's that's going to compete with him um maybe they think charlie partridge can do something with Taven Bryan because he is still a pretty athletic guy um but look i'm just going to say it it's a harsh league, and you have to be honest. Taven Bryan's a bust. You know, he was drafted in the first round. The man has been a bust uh, for out right from the get go. So, I think that it's it's probably more to do with compete with Adetomo Adebayore and see if Charlie Partridge can do something with him. Maybe they're impressed by Taven Bryan's athleticism because, like I said, he's a little bit of a smaller defensive tackle, but he can't run defend at all. And even though he's more of a pass rusher. He struggled in that regard as well when there was more snaps under his belt. So I don't know. I, I definitely don't like it, though. I feel like it's, it's honest to God, a waste of money. I do think that I mean, since it is a one year a one year league I veteran minimum deal. I mean, it's, change, it's, yeah. it's almost I can see why because it's like a it's a low risk high reward. Because if Taven Bryan comes back, obviously he was out of position for the majority of last season uh, as the nose tackle. You know, because against the run, he's atrocious. If they keep him as the backup to DeForest Buckner or have him compete with uh, with uh, with Adabare there at the th three technique, sure, maybe you get a, a, a better season out of Taven Bryan. But there's no guarantee that that Taven Bryan makes this roster come come September. You know, yeah. I think it's it's he, he what he wasn't getting much attention in free agency. The Colts are offering him an opportunity to kind of reprove himself and if he can make the roster and be a, a solid pass rushing defensive tackle behind DeForest Buckner sure go ahead but if if not me he doesn't play well in the in the preseason and in training camp and Adabari starts to kind of put it all together then the Colts can cut ties very quickly so I mean I I I, I, I said I didn't get it but at the end of the day uh, I, I I'm not going to I don't and I don't think Colts fans should either uh 
sharpen their pitchforks and 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 get riled up about a guy about Taven Bryan signing for for probably a million dollars and it's not even going to end up counting against the ca- the top 51 cap uh regardless but Danny Pinter like that signing uh, I've always been a fan of Danny Pinter at center not a guard at center but if he could be the backup center to Ryan Kelly this year I'm about it so uh but Drake let's talk about what we talk what we've watch today you know drake and i both up in south bend uh with jake arthur at the notre dame pro day where we're on the sidelines catching the action we already talked about audric estime and what he was able to do out there let's talk about some other guys so particularly cam hart because out of all the notre dame players that are that are going into the draft obviously i think cam hart is the best fit uh with the indianapolis colts watching him out there today drake i mean he he just looked looked like an indianapolis colts corner long uh uh physical uh long arms tall was a was a long strider uh was able to close fairly quickly because he he only ran a four five forty you know and you're thinking you know that's that for the cornerback that's that's fine it's not elite uh juju brents ran a four five forty last year uh and and in fact cam hart reminds me a lot of of juju brents so uh but Honestly, the way he performed today and, and what I was really focusing on was his footwork and his hips, you know, how how quickly he was able to turn, how quickly he was able to cover ground. Cam Hart honestly really impressed me today. And and he has some some good games on tape. Definitely went up against a better competition against Marvin Harrison Jr. last year. He did a really, really good job of, of locking down uh one of the best, if not the best wide receiver in the country. So uh in my opinion, Drake, I I really think Cam Hart it could be in consideration for round two pick for the Indianapolis Colts, and and if that's the case, he would probably be competing with Jalen Jones to start opposite of Juju Brents. Well, and that's exactly what you need, and that's I love the fact that you mentioned that he looked like an Indianapolis Colt because what that means is. Long arms. Even Kenny Moore, who's like five foot nine, he has an incredible wingspan for a shorter guy. All right. Like it, it's always a trait of some kind. Speed, freakish athleticism, physicality, long arms, whatever. He looked more like Juju Brents, like you said, though. The six I mean, he's like six foot two, six foot three. He's got those long arms that that can really disrupt routes. They can put guys you know, in cement shoes, you know, at the start of a route within five yards, he's, he's a physical corner, you know, and I think that um, that's, I, I think that he would be a really nice fit for the team. I also, um, I, I also do like uh, Blake Fisher. Um, he's, he's one of the tackles. He plays both left and right. He's kind of similar to Blake Freeland, honestly. And I, I don't think that we should sleep on Blake Freeland completely yet. I don't think that he was supposed to play the snaps and the competition that he had to. Uh, I also don't think he was supposed to play left and right, but he did. I mean, you talk about the, the quintessential, if anyone wants to look at an NFL baptism by fire, go back and watch the 2023 rookie season for Blake Freeland. That guy had to play literally the best the NFL could throw at him, including Aaron Donald. Okay, so I just think that you want to make sure that Blake Freeland is a good a good depth tackle. I think that you want to have two worthwhile backup tackles not just one you know what happens you know knock on wood if both freeland or uh uh, both ryman and smith are out okay you want to have good backups all right so i i I thought that blake uh, blake fisher kind of stood out for me um and of course i i i'm already now i'm blanking on the name he uh linebacker notre dame i think it's lafau i'm like having a I'm having yes. a yes. Um, I, I I'll get the I'll get the name in a second, but uh, basically the the you know Notre Dame has Lafau at linebacker, who is the quintessential coverage guy, and the Colts need cover linebacker help. They need more of it. I know that they've got Ronnie Harrison, who's a recently converted safety, but Zaire Franklin and EJ Speed, while they can cover, they're not necessarily the greatest at it. And I do think that Saguna Luby. He's still a good a good person to have, you know, on the depth chart. Grant Stewart is, I still think, more of a special teams guy. Um, but, but you know, I think that linebacker depth is just as important, and you need coverage. You need to be able to cover the tight ends, the slots, 
Um, and you know, you've got, you need to have smaller, more athletic linebackers for that. And I thought, I, I think that LaFau fits, you know, so there was, there was a couple guys that, you know, kind of surprised us a little bit. And I, I do think at the end of the day, though, Cam Hart's probably the, the ultimate fit, you know, out of any single one of those guys that's, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Maris LaFau, great athletic cover linebacker i think that he could be a later a later pick or maybe even an undrafted guy you know who knows who knows with some of those day three projections but i think that cam hart what we saw how tall he is just he fits he fits and i think out of everyone we saw andrew even though uh even though it's awesome to you know think about other fits with the team that we saw today um you know even a guy like joe alt who's going to go top 10 <laughs> i just think that uh, i think that cam hart probably fits better than anybody else yeah drake you spent you spent quite a bit of time talking with with maurice leofow today um uh, and I, I do think a, a later round pick really good in coverage uh he definitely can overrun things at, at times that definitely shows up on film He's got but if bad the, angles yeah but if the colts are looking for for a guy that can really compete and, and be a good pass coverage linebacker maurice leofow is is in my opinion one of the one of those top fits and you can get him on day three of of the nfl draft oh, yeah. so it's, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting uh obviously talk, we talked to sam hartman colts aren't going to be interested in sam hartman probably <laughs> but overall i think it was honestly sam hartman's best day of the entire pre pre-draft process you know was shaky uh at the senior bowl especially during the game uh I thought his combine performance was 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 good, not great. Uh, yeah. but, but the way he threw the ball today, very, very impressive with how Sam Hartman threw the ball today at Notre Dame. Um, we, we saw him having a very long conversation with, with current or new, I should say, Washington Commanders offensive coordinator Cliff Kingsbury uh, after, after the pro day had concluded. That was very interesting, uh, in my opinion, because I, I see Sam Hartman as a, as a day, day three pick. So if, if the, the commanders are going uh, with Jaden Daniels or Drake May at two, and, and they're looking to bring in a, uh, a young backup quarterback who, who has some experience can kind of be a calming voice uh, for for their young starter they've already got marcus mariota in the building but sam hart maybe he's qb3 there in in washington you know to me cam hart it, he, he does there's so many similarities to, to sam ellinger you know uh they could both they're both not immensely you mean athletic. sam hartman you said cam yes. hart yes sam <laughs> sam sam hart, hartman, hartman is yes gosh. sam hartman and sam <laughs> ellinger Okay, my goodness, so many Sam's. So much going on. But Ellinger and Hartman, sim similarities. You know, not the biggest arm, can move around a little. Both definitely have a lot of experience in college. Both are smart, smart guys uh, and are just good for the quarterback room. So maybe a late day three uh, or a day three pick by the commanders and, and Sam Hartman ends up with, uh, with, with Cliff Kingsbury after all. Yeah, and it was interesting because, I mean, he was like walking away from his interview with the media, but it was Cliff Kingsbury that stopped him, put his arm around him, and then they walked out to the field and started talking. So maybe that's his fit. You know, maybe that's where he's going to be. But it was just a really good atmosphere. There was some good NFL coaches there, a lot of scouts. Uh, a lot of teams were had their eyes on, on Notre Dame's pro day. But, hey, we personally feel like a couple of these guys could fit the Colts pretty well. I And I think me and Andrew are in unison that Cam Hart is probably the number one fit out of today's pro day. Listen, Patrick, over four hours of driving from South Bend and back today, uh, getting up only i'm probably on maybe four hours of sleep uh four hours of driving four hours of football practice lots of interviews uh my and and hey after this i'm recording locked on colts later tonight so make sure you tune into that so we still got a ways to go but hey i'm pushing through uh but yeah good good notre dame pro day i uh, want to shout out to, to notre dame the, the their athletic department uh, their communications department for, for for getting so many players available uh to interview at the pro day today uh re really really good acts so always enjoy uh, go, getting to go up to South Bend uh, on the pro day and, and really just talk to the players about the process. So a lot of, a lot of good dudes on that team that are, that are going to make some, some NFL teams very, very happy. Drake, let's wrap up the show with the latest Colts news and rumors. We already talked about some of these, uh, so we'll just quickly run through them. Obviously, we already talked about Shane Steichen, Jim Bob Cooter, and Reggie Wayne attending the Texas Pro Day uh, yesterday, uh, presumably to get a really good up-close look at, at AD. 
Mikey Mitchell, Savior Worthy, and then Jatavion Sanders, the the, the probably num- the number two tight end in this class. If if you want to add Jatavion Sanders and and have Jelani Woods, have Jatavion be the inline guy, and Jelani Woods be your your movable chess piece. Not a bad plan for Shane Steichen and the Indianapolis Colts as well. Still don't see the Colts really taking a tight end very early unless it is uh, Brock Bowers because of, of Brock Bowers' talent and his ceiling. But to me, to have Reggie Wayne there instead of Tom Manning, that definitely seems like it's A.D. Mitchell and Xavier Worthy, two guys that the Colts have their eyes firmly set on in this draft class. Well, and you need to give Anthony Richardson weapons because, again, people, it's all about Anthony Richardson. It's about fitting his strengths. Alec Pierce is a deep ball guy, but is he an elusive short yard guy as well? Is he is he an uh, you know a little bit more of a crisp route runner? Is his ceiling in the long term going to be higher than Worthy or Mitchell? Probably not. Okay, so I think that I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it's really good to see all three of those guys there because it means that they're probably taking wide receiver pretty damn seriously and they don't want to short Anthony Richardson any big potential weapons he could have. I agree. And it came out that Xavier Worthy is going to be hosted by the Colts on a 30 visit. So again, yep. the Colts doing oh, yeah. extensive work on Xavier Worthy throughout this draft process. Definitely something to keep an eye on as we get closer to the NFL draft. Julian Black, but continuing his free agent visits, he did he visited with the Bills earlier this week, did not come to an agreement as instead they signed Mike Edwards, uh, a, a guy who worked out for the Colts this week at safety. <laughs> Julian Blackman is now heading out west, and he has a visit set up with the San Francisco 49ers. So uh, Julian Blackman going to the 49ers would definitely be an upgrade at the safety position for them and, and continue to uh, to just build on, on that stout defense out there in San Francisco. I'm going to go out and go on a limb and say that the fact that the Bills just visited where they had Julian Blackman visit them and they talked with him and they went and signed Mike Edwards instead. Colts fans, be prepared for Indianapolis to wait a little longer on Julian Blackman. Nobody's signing him. Nobody's signing him. And that tells me that they're going to sit back and they're just sitting back in chairs going, you know what? We're letting you check out the market and... um." You're not getting signed. So I, I, I think that it would be interesting if he got signed with the 49ers. I also think that if he goes ahead and, and doesn't get signed by the 49ers and they just go a different route, man, he might start running out of suitors. And he might actually be back to the Colts coming back to them saying, hey, you know, I'd love to re-sign with this team. You know, I've tested the market. It's interesting, though. I, I'm, I think that it's got to be more than anything his medicals. That's the thing I think that's holding Julian Blackman back. Because even though he had a career season, people remember he missed the last two games of the season with a shoulder injury after having a horrific injury history before that. I think I think I don't necessarily think it's the current medicals. I think it's just the the risk. Yeah, uh, his his yeah. injury history is a risk, and and he's probably commanding more money than teams are willing to give up at this point. Exactly for, for the safety position. You know, and that's what the Colts are doing. They're letting the market set itself for Julian Blackman. And and if he does come away with an offer, uh, I, I think the Colts probably have it that they want to at least have the opportunity to match uh, for Julian Blackman. If not, then then Blackman obviously will be going somewhere else and there'll be a new starting safety for the Indianapolis Colts. But Drake, still a month out from the draft, uh, obviously. Colts still have holes to fill, but I don't think it's time to panic yet. You know, there are still quality uh, uh, guys, both at safety, cornerback on the free agent market. And then as we get into the April, that's when we're going to be doing our deep dive into NFL draft stuff. But it's it still seems like cornerback and wide receiver. Those are the two positions that are in play there at 15, whether it is Brian Thomas Jr. or A.D. Mitchell, or it ends up being Quinion Mitchell or Cooper DeGene. Uh, I got a pretty good feeling that it's likely going to be one of those four guys is going to end up being the pick uh, for the Indianapolis Colts in round one. Yes, and Colts fans, be excited. Okay, I know that it's not as, as sexy as talking about a quarterback, but you know what? You've got your quarterback. You've got your coach. You've got all the staff assembled. Now it's nice to talk about where they're going to go because they have a couple things that they need to address, um, but I, I think that they've got a good plan. I did want to highlight one comment from Wren. Does it make me a lousy fan that I'm not angry at Ballard and don't want him fired? I see so much negative negativity on Colts Twitter. You don't even like checking anymore. No, that doesn't make you a lousy fan at all. I, I think that I think that Ballard 
even though he has been he, he's been conservative, he also inherited a very weird situation from 2017 on. I won't get into it, but just go back and look at it. A lot of GMs don't have their quarterback retire out of nowhere, so it sets you back four or five years. So I think that Ballard's got the coach, he's got the QB, he's got Jonathan Taylor resigned. The pillars like Michael Pittman, Zaire Franklin, Grover Stewart, those guys are all staying. You just got to address the depth. You got to address a little bit in free agency, and you have to address the draft. I do think he needs to nail this draft, though, because there's so much that needs to be hit. There's so many areas that need filled, and and I think that uh, I think this is a big draft for for Chris Ballard. But hey, everyone, if at number fifteen Brock Bowers is available, I think that that actually uh, helps out a lot of those areas. Just saying, right, Andrew? Yeah, absolutely let's keep the train rolling but uh, <laughs> Rock power there, train. there's still a lot of time left in the offseason Colts fans and and I I don't I don't expect the the Indianapolis are, are, are not going to make any more moves the moves are going to come uh just might not be at the at the exact time that you that you want them to happen so that's our show for tonight guys really appreciate everybody tuning in and talking Colts football with us here uh, as like I said a month out until the draft so there's still going to be some free agency moves over the next month uh, but once we get into April, the pro days are, are finished. We're going to really dive deep into the draft to try to figure out who the Colts are taking exactly at number 15 want to give a shout out to our super chats this evening Truett, dsg good bar and yim thank you guys so much for all of your support uh and the super chats and everyone else uh who joined in the tonight to talk about colts football uh if you haven't done so please go follow us on all of our socials like horseshoe huddle on facebook follow at colts on fn on x and subscribe to the horseshoe huddle youtube channel hit that bell so you know when drake and i go live every monday and thursday night so you never miss an episode but if you can't catch us as live or on youtube apple spotify google wherever you listen to podcasts we're on there as well so make sure to subscribe give us a five-star review so we we can reach other colts fans just like you and don't forget to order your uh, copy of the indie draft guide use the link in the description and the code draft miss to get a dollar off get that pre-ordered today so drake i know as always you're riding away on horseshoehuddle.com trying to get content out to the masses uh what are some articles that you got up on the site people can go check out so i i recently did um i recently did three free agents that the colts should have signed then there's going to be um a, a well actually there was a release on the fact that they had they have the top 30 visit with xavier worthy but then i'm going to be detailing uh, myself andrew and jake's time at the notre dame pro day uh, so go check those out also thank you everyone for dealing with my very weird in-law background <laughs> and my odd sounding audio Appreciate it. <laughs> hey, we, we made it through, brother. So, yeah, definitely go check <laughs> out uh, Drake's pieces that he's, that he's got on there uh, for myself got a piece out on uh, uh the Colts going down to the Texas Pro Day. Uh why Shane Steich and Jim Bob Cooter and Reggie Wayne are all down there, the significance of that. And then I dive in a little bit on the those three prospects that we talked about earlier, AD Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, and Jatavion Sanders, uh what they bring to the table and why the Colts are are potentially interested in all three of those guys. Uh and then on top of our our notes from the Notre Dame Pro Day, Audric Estime spent some time with him today. So going to put a piece out there, potentially the next backup running back for the Indianapolis Colts uh, had had some good things to say today at the Notre Dame Pro Day. So uh, I'll have that piece out on HorseshoeHuddle.com as well. So make sure you check all that out on the site. Go follow Drake at D. Walster Drake. You can follow me at Andrew Moore NFL. One more super chat from Shaheen, our, our, our good buddy. Thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Love y'all showing support. Uh, thank you so much, buddy. We appreciate appreciate it and I appreciate you joining on this journey with us here at horseshoe huddle and the horseshoe huddle podcast and as always guys we'll be right back here monday night to break down everything that happened from the from the weekend with the colts if there's more signings great if not we're going to start diving into the nfl draft and looking at some of those top prospects so you'll want to be here for that and colts fans Relax. The offseason is still young. There's still plenty of time for moves. And I, I can guarantee you this, the Colts are going to make some noise here uh, within the next month or so. Have a good one, and we'll see you next Monday.